Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Agassino Zinga Show, episode number 375 with me, your host, Agassino Zinga. This is episode number 375. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Great. Amazing. Good to know. How am I? Yeah, you know, better, better than yesterday. Let's just say that. If it's your first time watching the show via YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. If you're watching or listening via any sort of podcasting platform, whether it's Spotify, iTunes, or that malarkey, make sure you download the show, leave me a five star review, and share it with your friends. And if you want to support the show via Patreon and get access to my entire audio library of podcasts, as well as this podcast in full audio format before it comes out anywhere else, make sure you subscribe via Patreon. The link is down below patreon.com for just Agostino, A G O S T I N H O, for as little as one dollar per month get access to my entire library as well as this audio episode before anybody else gets it so make sure you sign down below on patreon.com for just agostino that's patreon.com for just a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o cool man what's been going on what's been going on what's been going on not much really in it same old same old um i guess the big news in the uk is um we've chelsea changed the, the rules in terms of who you're allowed to meet um the government have finally pulled out their finger and decided to try and combat this virus that we're all kind of um suffering from the worldwide and so much so they've now kind of uh brought forward this rule um that i have here actually via sky news that says um coronavirus breaking self isolation to be made illegal with fines up to ten thousand. the funny thing is is this is just the rule that's been brought into place now so this whole time that we've been under lockdown under quarantine you know abiding by quarantine rules if you've come back from holidays and you know social distancing all that malarkey it was never illegal to just break isolation or break quarantine when you went somewhere um you know or when you went somewhere that was a covid threat and came back to your mother country it wasn't illegal you could just do it so obviously it was strongly advised that you stay home for 14 days but for the most part if you didn't happen to hop out on the 10th day and decided to attend a street parade somewhere i don't know where the street parades are happening but you tend to do to you know i'm not i'm gonna skirt this i'm gonna do my own thing it wouldn't have been illegal you would have been perfectly within your rights to do so you might have got a telling off you might have got a stern warning or a finger wag or two but that would have been it which is quite maddening to think in it again Better late than never, don't get me wrong, but it's quite crazy to think, it, considering how this um, pandemic has affected the economy, the world ride, why it's probably affecting people's mental health for, for you know, an unprecedented amount of time. I'm sure the effects of this will be felt for decades to come. You would think they'd be trying their done this to make sure this doesn't happen, not in, not in any way to like be, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying it to be charitable or so they, they can help out um, humanity in any way shape or form just for their own selfish desires right to be re-elected um for their legacy to remain intact whatever it may be right for every selfish reason you think they try to kind of get this out of the paint as soon as possible but no for the most part most governments are just like you know what if we close our eyes and we dance around the spot long enough um by the time we wake up this thing will be a distant distant memory and it's just like no that's not how it goes so this article from sky news it says the following people who have coronavirus and um, will be required to self-isolate by law with those who refuse facing fines of up to ten thousand pounds in england so a bit different from what i said about quarantine but still the point remains ministers are toughening up their stance by making the current guidance a legal requirement in the to try and prevent the second spike of COVID-19 ballooning across the UK and potential uh, for a second national lockdown, which I mentioned prior, right? I did tell you in this other show that the second lockdown wasn't going to happen mostly or primarily because of the money involved. It's not because of any kind of, you know, um, humanitarian reason. It's just more so because they cannot take the hit on the economy to lock down any major parts of the UK, especially a city such as London. They just would never do it. So they'd rather increase the fines, have police roaming the streets, having encouraging people to fob in their neighbours, whatever it takes just to avoid that second lockdown. Because if it happens, we are F-U-C-K-E-D for a long, long time. It continues, it says, just 20% of those reporting symptoms in England have fully isolated at home for the required two weeks a government scientific advisor known as s-a-g-e sage found at the end of august 20 percent of people have been complaining. that's the big reason to a lot of the i can sit here and give government stick and say hey you so and so aren't do, you're not doing a good job look at what they're doing in singapore look what they're doing in new zealand look what they're doing in switzerland blah 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 but the actual 
issue here is more so the compliance of the nation you're in or um, the likelihood that your that your um that your citizens will uh collectively decide that for the greater good is better that they adhere to the rules so that you know they can give each other the best chance or their kids the best chance of succeeding in the future right it's really hard to um write that down in law it's really hard to force people to give a crap it really is difficult to so in this instance the countries i've done the most are the ones i've had a bit more of a collective spirit the ones that have kind of decided that hey this isn't just affecting me it's affecting you him her everybody else that's associated with us let's just make sure that we kind of hunker down and get rid of this thing so I don't again like can you really blame some of these um countries such as even you know places like north america that have been ravaged by corona um second spikes in italy and spain can you actually blame these governments like what more can they legitimately do they can't force people back in their homes by gunpoint can they if they had guns and they were legal to do so i'm sure they would but god damn it man 20 percent compliance is really embarrassing so so prime minister boris johnson is changing the law from monday 20th of september to force anyone who gives who gets a positive test or is contacted by a test and trace system and told that they may have a right to isolate. Fines for breaches will start at 10,000 but could rise to 10 to 1,000, sorry, but could 10,000 for repeat offences. The penalties can also be dished out to those preventing others from self isolating, such as bosses who threaten staff who cannot go to work because they're isolating with redundancies. At the same time, a 500 lump sum is being offered for those who need to isolate uh, and will lose money as a result of not working on benefits and cannot do their job from home, which is awesome the payment system may not be ready until the 12th of october though but the government is promising anyone eligible who has isolated who has, who has to isolate earlier will get back track support it will be paid on top of the saturated sick pay or any other benefit to make sure people who should isolate test and trace call handlers are apparently make regular contact and report anyone who's failing to local council and the police again this fobbing in culture is gonna this might be one of the legacies of lockdown neighbors deciding to you know yeah this might be the one of the legacies like the uh, the resurgence of the karens right or they're not even karens because that's a different thing the the, the ones that want to go around and call the local council and tell people that you're having a house party or complain about the weed smoke it's going to definitely birth a whole generation of those people mr johnson said the best way to get um we can fight this virus he says by everyone following the rules and self-isolating if they are at risk or passing on the coronavirus he added we need to do all we can to control the spread of this virus to prevent the most vulnerable people from becoming infected and to protect the NHS. Standard nonsense. Annalise Dodds labors shadow cancer said the party said had called time and time again for people who need to isolate to be given proper financial support. As if that's the reason. People just don't want to do it because they don't give a shit. It's not because they're not getting the right financial aid. Um, we welcome the belated introduction of extra support, but it shouldn't have taken months for the penny to finally drop. Um, the people of low income needing more help shadowed, and with only a fraction of workers eligible for this payment, government must work urgently to fill any gaps. But yeah, again, a little bit too late, but at least they're doing something to counteract what's going on at the moment. Um, but again, I, I I would love to I would love to get into the mind of somebody that you know has tested positive for Corona and decides, hey, you know what, I think I'm I feel alright, so I'm gonna head out. It kind of reminds me of what Brendan Shaw did, didn't it? That was kind of the beginning to the end of the, uh, the fire and the kid prior to the allegations against Brian Kellen and Chris Delia. Part of the reason why everyone sort of hates those guys is because you know they just decided, you know, hey. And even no, they didn't Shaw do it right. He decided to just like, oh, I feel good, so he went on a bike ride. And then he felt amazing and he had no lasting um, ill effects from the disease. So he thought, you know what, I'm going to scoot on and go somewhere else and do my <laughs> fun times. I'm not going to stay indoors like one of you losers. And of course, with the misinformation they put out there, it's just it's just amazing to see all the victims is claimed really in that regard. It's really, really funny. But yeah, funny. Is it funny? It's not really funny. But hey, if you don't laugh, you cry. So I'd rather laugh. Anyways moving on what else do we have we have news here from variety magazine saying that amazon music have launched um into podcasting which is a very very interesting development especially if you've been keeping an eye on the drama between joe budden and spotify and charlemagne and brilliant idiots and you know what's the value of a stream and blah 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 this is very very interesting news going forward so if Variety says Amazon Music punches into podcasts with millions of free episodes, original shows from DJ Khaled, Becky G, Will Smith and more. Interesting. So Amazon Music is now offering millions of episodes of a free podcast and has a set of Slate original 
um, programming coming to the platform representing a major new revival to Spotify sorry rival Spotify and Apple Podcasts free podcasts are available on all tiers of Amazon Music for no additional cost and have first launched for customers in the US UK and Germany and Japan original shows can be um, being produced exclusively with Amazon Music including a podcast with DJ Khaled Becky G Will Smith and Dan Patrick I'm familiar with DJ Khaled Becky G and Will Smith I don't know who Dan Patrick is but I would say DJ Khaled is probably the one person hip hop who probably needs a podcast more than anybody right he's perfect for it but big personality um really funny dude if you watched a recent video um for pop star featuring justin bieber and drake you'd see how kind of um funny he is he's able to take the piss out of himself um he has you know he has a very grandiose sort of burt kreischer way of speaking about things everything is in the extreme everything is the marvelous fantastic and you know talking about haters all those kind of big slogans that he has right day all that good stuff so i think he'd be really perfect for that platform especially if he's given a chance to kind of interview let's not say maybe the newer people but some of the in the some of the legends that basically helped his career along the way that would be quite cool provide his platform yeah allow he could give a platform to the people that inspired him and just coming up or give him a chance trying to you know be, be able to give back that way and maybe future be able to kind of um talk to some of the newer kids about the lessons that he's learned throughout the industry but i definitely think it's an interesting move from amazon because you do get the you do get the kind of feeling that a lot of people have kind of been put off by Spotify's business and let alone the service. I think the service itself, I've kind of got around to it. I finally started to use it more. If anything, listening to albums on it is really annoying. Like I keep saying, it kind of immediately kind of, especially on the app, it sort of forces you to play it via shuffle. So you lose any of the um, sequencing flow and vibe and tonality that the artist put together or for the album, right? Certain albums have to be played from the beginning to the end. Most albums should be played like that. But in this era where kids like to listen to stuff via playlist, they kind of cater to that. So that's really annoying. And the discoverability of it is annoying too. You don't necessarily get all the releases that are meant to release no, you don't get notified of releases you should get notified about when you open the app. You kind of have to search around for it. They um, they push the stuff that labels pay for instead of the stuff that you'll actually give a crap about. And they have a really easy way of gathering that information, right? All the tunes that you like, the stuff you added into your album list and stuff, they should be able to, they've got enough data points for them to make a decision as to what you would like, right? But they don't necessarily do that. So that's the, that's the really concerning part of it. But I think in general, the, from how they've done their business, you know, objectively looking at what's happened to Joe Biden, yes, he may be not the best person to deal with business-wise. He may not have the best business brain in there in the world but the requirements they're asking for the fact that they kind of outperformed their contract the fact that they have a really unique voice in hip-hop and spotify was still wasn't able to do a deal with them sort of took them for granted um weren't allowing them to um have any kind of sense of ownership in any way shape or form it kind of really put a bad taste in the mouth for most people so i think people are waiting for other platforms to make a move um to then for them so that they can make a move and i think these other platforms such as amazon are probably going to learn from the mistakes of an apple or mistakes from a spotify and also provide content producers or content creators the opportunity to uh bolster whatever they're doing on a platform that you know most people use day-to-day -day ordering stuff in it so if they can build it out in a good way i think it'll work hopefully they have another team working on it that isn't working on amazon prime video because amazon prime video is terrible you it's terrible you use the user experience yeah terrible very very terrible ux um it's very hard to navigate um it doesn't really work that well it's very clunky obviously the shows on there are amazing the boys i'm watching that currently i'm sure most of you are but as an actual app to use a service a product a feature it's not the best so i'm hoping they have a whole different team building out the amazon music podcast thing and really making that a thing because i think there is a an opportunity for them to steal a bit of a, a still a bit of market share from spotify and what they're doing at the moment Especially when you consider how quickly Spotify kind of took a chunk of the market away from Apple because Apple just so basically stood still. So I'm sure if Amazon make the requisite effort, they'll be all right. So it continues. It says Amazon Music currently offers 70,000 podcast shows and plans to continue adding more available on non exclusive basis um, on Amazon Music. Our popular podcasts such as Serial, Dr. Death, What the Fuck, da da da. Let's we'll continue on. On the original front, Amazon Music has teamed with DJ Khaled for the first one, developed by Amazon Music and LeBron James Springhill Company. Wow, awesome. 
in which he interviews all time favorite artists. That's a great um, lane for him. Others include a multimedia podcast hosted by curated by pop artist Becky G called En La Sala. I'm assuming that's called In the Room, featuring audio and corresponding video podcast on Amazon Music Twitch channel, and the scene with Dan Patrick, producer of Amazon IMDb, in which the po- sports podcaster will interview Hollywood stars. An untitled podcast project with JD Pinkett Smith and Will Smith for Facebook. Um, audio a production with audio audible sorry will be coming soon to amazon music too okay that's awesome maybe that will that be an extension of red table talk you think or that'd be a separate thing that's a very interesting one going forward there that and again the range of these of these people man it's pretty impressive how they've been able to kind of um leverage one bit of fame in other you know entertainment or creative industries that's really cool exchange says in addition amazon music is starting in february uh 2021 will be the exclusive home of music meets true crime podcast disgrace land which explores the criminal antics and connection of some of the world's favorite musicians from the rolling stones to tupac he said partnering with amazon music allows me to really give my listeners what they really ask for from disgrace land content said host jake brennan and co-founder at double elvis productions he said through this partnership with amazon music we're enhancing the future for the future of the show for fans expanding our output of content by moving to an always on weekly schedule which will translate to more episodes for listeners on the as consistent basis amazon also is encouraging podcasters to distribute their podcast amazon music to reach over 55 million customers who listen to amazon music the podcast will stream directly from a content host uh, creators platform provider which i'm definitely going to do so all your metrics will be unaffected and if you're running advertisement through a dynamic ad insertion system things will work as same as other podcasting services he said um amazon rep said our customers listening habits are constantly evolving and we know they're looking to us to provide them with a rich experience rooted in music and entertainment said steve boom v VP of Amazon Music and said in an up and podcast launched a podcast paired with a recent partnership with Twitch to bring live streaming into the app makes Amazon Music a premier destination for creators so that should be really awesome and I'm interested to see how that develops and we should see if they kind of make a move for some of the hip hop type shows um, in kind of black entertainment that would be interesting to see whether or not they kind of branch out to some other things I'm sure I saw what did I see was it the cut was it Apple the cut yeah so a lot of there's, a, there's been a resurgence in some sort of like fashion-y type of creative sort of seen podcast so let's see what happens going forward but definitely they've got the bag for sure to acquire some big talent and you know if they're able to build out the app or the product or the product in a good way you know, you know something better than amazon prime video like i've mentioned before it's definitely going to be a contender in a podcasting space for sure going forward but let's see let's see next on the list we have a funny story about Joe Rogan having to apologize for misinformation regarding some fires in LA, I guess, or in California that have been happening over the what last couple of weeks, especially in the midst of some of the riots. So I guess he was on with who was it? Douglas Murray, um, the author of Madness of Crowds. A recommended read for anybody that's um uh, interested in learning more about, you know, social justice warriors and, you know, social justice issues in general um it's definitely a very eye-opening book in the same way that mark ronson's so even publicly shamed is source occupies the same sort of space so um i guess they got talking and joe rogan mentioned something about antifa being responsible for lighting up some of the forests and causing some of these forest fires that have ravaged parts of california and obviously there might be some truth to it but i guess the way he kind of said it made people be- made he made he made it seem as if this was a bona fide fact when you know it's hard to very to to kind of i guess it'll be hard to um claim one way or the other whether or not it was started on purpose or whether they're just like a natural occurrence especially considering uh the magnitude of the damage so this is from cnn and i guess the reason why they're reporting on it is because um joe rogan apologized which isn't a bad thing right he's you know he's it's it's actually an honorable thing that he decided to apologize so many times in media now especially some of the mainstream media outlets um they're very quick to report on things with misinformation or to paint the narrative in a certain way but they're not quick to kind of retract or to recant some of their statements they just leave it out there to kind of stoke the fires of discontent and division that exists especially in parts of america and especially here in the uk too so they're not the most responsible uh, of people in the world at all so if anything the people on podcast 
us are because for the most part if you listen to a place like joe rogan number one he's not cnn he's not fox news he's just a guy you know talking shit with his friends on a podcast smoking weed drinking whiskey so you shouldn't be taking everything he says as gospel anyway and even if he does say something that is completely out of line he has a benefit and the beauty of having his own show where he can literally just turn on the camera address the fans and say hey i got this wrong as he's proven with this show with this um episode so it really does say more about mainstream media that they think he kind of looks bad because he said something that was wrong and then apologized for it then does about joe in my opinion but anyway let's continue the article says the following um joe rogan reportedly the um not reportedly it is true um the highest paid podca- podcast host in the whole world has apologized for spreading misinformation to his millions of listeners about the west coast fires during a recent episode he said i need to make apology to the duh and retraction i said something on a podcast with douglas murray about people getting arrested for lying fires and i got duped it was wrong actually let's play the video of him actually saying i don't read the article let's play the actual video of joe rogan apologizing himself and we'll get to the article back in a minute <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I need to make an apology and a retraction. Um, I said something on the podcast with Douglas Murray about people getting arrested for uh, lighting fires, and uh, I got duped. It's wrong. Uh, there was a, one guy who got arrested for lighting fires somewhere else, and someone sent me something about people getting arrested for lighting fires in Portland, and I said it without looking into it. It's very irresponsible. Um, I just I didn't check. I made a mistake, I fucked up, and uh, I'm sorry if I duped you as well. Um, There's nothing I can do about it now, it's out there, but it's definitely a mistake, my apologies. And I will take this into consideration, certainly when I uh, say things in the future. I know it feels very irresponsible of me. I don't take it lightly, I'm very upset with myself, and uh, I apologize to you as well, sorry. So pretty heartfelt, pretty sincere, nothing really wrong with that, right? But let's continue with CNN. So it says the following, I'm Roland Roden made comments during an episode with his podcast, Sharing Experience, which, which featured Murray, author of Manus of Cars, released on Thursday. The Roden Experience, which was added to Spotify on the September the 1st, will become an exclusive later this year. It's one of the most popular podcasts in the United States. Again, I think sometimes with these articles, it seems like they're purposely trying to smear him or pressure Spotify into dropping him. I'm not too sure why, but it, it does sound a little bit snaky. But let's continue. Rogan, a comedian who built his brand around no holds barred, interviewed with some controversial guest tops Forbes 2020 list of the highest earning podcast again mentioning his money and his influence and all that sort of stuff what is that is that like a patriarchy thing i don't know weird anyway um he says there is a madness going on here rogan said during the first episode you you want to talk about madness crowds that exemplifies that right now they have arrested people for lighting forest fires up there um they have arrested left-wing people for lighting these forest fires you know air quote activists and this is also something that is not widely been reported so cnn's Be- uh, brianna keller said on cnn newsroom on friday the topic has does not been widely reported because it's hashtag or oh, quote unquote not true what has been reported is that there are local and state officials out all to all through the region who have been coming out and refusing or refuting sorry these conspiracy theories again i'm not sure why they're painting them as conspiracy theories i don't think it's that far out to suggest that there might be some um some bad actors who are going out of their way to start fires in order to kind of further i don't know what disrupt what's going on in the country at the moment in america i don't think it's that far-fetched it probably is happening whether or not it's roving gangs of antifa people masked up wearing all black traveling around in vans throwing cigarettes out of windows and stuff everywhere they go that's obviously another case but um, i don't think it's too far i don't think it's it's taking it too far saying that that could happen it could why why not it's not that far-fetched cnn's um national correspondence um correspondent miguel marquez told kyla that local sheriffs and fbi have investigated and are being uh begging people to stop spreading false information indeed the fbi on september 11th issued a statement saying that it has investigated several such reports and found them to be untrue okay fair enough in this instagram post on friday rogan apologized said to listen that he, he may have been misled um this is far from the first time rogan's been spurred by controversy spotted by CEO Daniel Eck addressed his employees again another remark to maybe try and get cancelled concerns Wednesdays about his recent remarks Rogan made about transgender people uh duh, 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 duh. um and just continues here in May Rogan signed a multi exclusive video Spotify duh, 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 duh. okay cool so he apologized for saying something wrong about his podcast which isn't a bad thing if anything this maybe is a, a clear indication that Rogan has maybe grown more in influence than he's actually aware of i think he mentioned it prior in one of his shows you said that now he kind of finally realizes the influence and the reach that he has on his show because 
considering how successful and wealthy of a guy he is, he's pretty level headed and you know has pretty much has his feet on the ground. Um, he tends to kind of carry himself in a very um normal quote unquote way. I'd say he doesn't let his success get to his head. So I think that training, that kind of self speak, and in trying to kind of you know not he's he's obviously very conscious of not trying to he doesn't want to turn into a dickhead right he doesn't want to ever be that guy who gets uh you know develops or builds a massive platform and then somehow along the line just turns into a complete cunt and you know it turns off his home fan base on him because i think most broadcasters in that mold of a rogan uh, media figures have done that some long some time along the way right they've essentially turned off their original fan base um they've made some enemies within the industry on their way up through some back you know for some shady business deals and they've essentially just been you know essentially they're in a position now where they can't get cancelled they can't get replaced because they're just kind of you know they're part of the fixtures but they're also someone that not a lot of people like but i think jerogan's kind of the opposite of that he's well liked and he seems to just kind of do his own thing but i think now especially with the spotify deal that amplifies his voice obviously put some money in his pocket it's definitely brought about some more scrutiny that he probably would have um liked but it's also kind of made him probably realize that hey i have a responsibility here to do as best as job as i can presenting the truth or present the facts as i know it so that he has a leg to stand on when he's complaining about mainstream media because you can't be joe saying on truth and then complain about um fox news causing division cnn causing division md msbc causing division in the country trump being a bad leader you can't uh, or spreading misinformation and lying you can't complain about these things if you're doing the same thing also and i guess he's setting a good precedent he's saying look i made a mistake i'm putting my hands up here's the error that i've done i'm going to try my best to make sure that i don't make these errors in the future and if i do have a dubious fact especially as i think it's different if he's talking to bill burr about this issue it's done probably in jest there is some sort of comedic element when you're sitting down with a douglas murray and you say something like this i can understand why some people take it more seriously because you're interviewing a an intellectual public you know yeah one of those kind of like you know political talking head people who essentially spend their entire lives on twitter searching these kind of news so you'd imagine it might be some level of truth to it so i don't necessarily see the bad thing in him apologizing if anything it's even another indication that quite possibly Spotify have their hands around his neck in a way that he hasn't necessarily been that truthful or honest about to his audience. Because I think in the beginning, he did make it seem like, hey, it's going to be the same show, no changes, we're just going to be licensing out to Spotify. But considering the missing episodes that they don't, they're not on the Spotify now at the moment, the Alex Jones is, the Owen Benjamins, and all these other people, and Milo, and then considering what's going on now with this recent apology, it does seem that although he did get the big check and he did get some money, in his pocket that is essentially going to secure the fu the futures of his family for generations to come it has come at a cost in some regard in terms of the podcast he now has over he now has corporate overlord or overlords who can influence or make some editorial content decisions on his podcast and he's also he's also kind of publicly apologizing for things and um, no better example of uh, just <laughs> what the issue is here than um, our man Joey Diaz decided to get on the Tom's Zagora, um, what I think podcast I think it might be your man has live and basically left made this comment regarding the thing that Joe Rogan's going through now at the moment. I'm gonna play for you now. Bear with me. There you go. It's Joe, uh, Joey Diaz's thoughts on the whole issue. <laughs> just, you got You gotta like these once a day. You gotta like these. What do you think about our buddy put an apology today? Who? You see Joe Rogan, Rogan, but he got apology. a fact oh, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Poor Joe Rogan. He put the apology up. They would tell him go. Because he he was that's hard for my dog. Yeah, my heart goes out to him. He had to put an apology up and shit. I guess he things look good when he was things look good in the basement, dog. <laughs> Once you take that Spotify money, <laughs> you got to start apologizing. <coughs> you don't believe you care about trannies. Oh that's god. <laughs> now he's got to go to a tranny today and donate ten dollars. <laughs> Any day now, you'll see Rogan hanging out with trannies <laughs> down in Austin, jumping up and down. You know, the poor guy. That's what happens when you get that money. When you cash that big check, you got to watch what you say. Aren't you lucky you're independent now? <laughs> you guys were upset for a couple of weeks. Uh, nobody wants to give us any money. Did you see him? He's got to do the apology. My name is Joe Rogan. I, don't kill, I can't go kill D no more. I can't do nothing no more. A hundred million. Uh. 
very accurate, right? If if ever, I think uh, Christina P's um, drinking of the water there is very uh, apt. And I guess that, again, is the issue. This, that should be a a cautionary tale for all content creators. If you are going to take the big bag from these corporate overlords, you're going to have to accept that you're going to have to give up some level of, whether it's creative control, whether it's autonomy, whether it's direction, whether it's all authorship you have to give up something in that exchange there's no way that you can even someone like a joe is a good example he's essentially one of the rare unicorns in the creative content media content content space who has a few money who can do as he pleases but even in his position he still has to backtrack make apologies uh agree to remove some episodes from the sh from the platform on spotify and then lie about it to alex jones i never mentioned it on his show um i even think the other show you, you had on the maybe the first one where the guy kept kind of probing and mentioning it and he never kind of bit or wanted to talk about the issue at all so he's obviously very concerned about the issue that you know he's essentially buckled underneath censorship a, an issue that he's kind of ragged upon his entire time that he's been making the podcast but again that is the game you play if you want to take that big check you're gonna to have to accept that that company or that corporate um, entity is going to have some voice or some opinion when it comes to the stuff that you're putting out there it just is what it is next on the list what else do we have here da, 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 da. let's get rid of him don't want to talk about him he's a waste of time what else we got to talk about here oh yeah let's um let's catch up on brian callan what's brian callan doing these days so obviously you guys are familiar with what's happening with brian callan you know um numerous sexual uh misconduct allegation against him um some of them more serious than others but so far there's been no real development i'm not too sure if there are pending court cases happening at the moment or if it's just a matter of every individual sort of taking stock on the situation and allowing some time to heal but essentially his career has you know been put on pause if not completely eradicated and stopped for the foreseeable future and considering i'm a bit of a fan it's really upsetting but also considering the allegations you can't take these kind of things lightly and you have to think hey man th those are some really meaty allegations that you need to somehow um dismiss or to somehow exonerate yourself from in order to move forward but you know he's decided in against doing whatever anyone else would do in his position laying low and brian kind of decided to set up his own podcast on patreon that was essentially a bit of a dupe it was a bit of a what what's that what, what do they call that they call that a um switcheroo was it thing was it called it's called something isn't it when you kind of present one thing and then when a the person agrees and you then you know the, the deliver something completely different but whatever in the, in the start it was kind of assumed that they were going to do the show called the fire in the rinks that kind of rebound on the fire and the kid on patreon behind a paywall with brendan and brian but um cast media the production company that essentially pays these guys and you know puts the show together decided no they pulled the plug on it they said that no sponsorships or no sponsors would want to be associated with the show especially with these allegations above credit brian so he essentially had to then go ahead and use that poetry money to decide to make a conspiracy theory show with sam tripoli which a lot of people seem to enjoy sam tripoli somebody in this conspiracy theory space conspiracy theory space who's very well respected if that's even a thing right but i think it is he does a lot of good work with his tim for hat podcast so that seemed to make sense but then obviously he maybe felt some level of guilt or maybe the defense were demanding some more content from him so now he's deciding to do this canon report thing where he essentially sits down and muses about you know current topics that are going on in the world but he decided to do another update for his fans which might have come on the back of some patrons dropping off if you believe the numbers on um the fire and the kids subreddit he's lost about 100 over a few what over a couple of months and something right so big up the homeless cats for providing that information but he has kind of dropped dropped in for his patron describe and provide some update on what's going on with him personally so let's find out what brian callan is doing and what he plans to do with the patreon coins that he has successfully amassed from their big fan base <clears throat> Let's go back. Yeah. Keep doing AKA Deep Waters uh, Conspiracy Social Club. We're going to have some guests on here as well. I'm going to start doing the Bookless Book Club where you guys always ask me what books to read. What? Well, I'm going to find, and I'm going to put the, I, I'm going to literally find the best books that you should waste your time on. Let me explain. I'll the sad thing is, he's a stand up comedian, right? Fair enough, he might be a little bit intelligent more intelligent than the average stand-up comedian but to suggest that your fans want book recommendations 
from you as if you're some sort of public intellectual in that regard is ludicrous and extreme but again i don't blame the guy your career has been you know completely destroyed on the off the back of in his opinion baseless accusations um he's not he's a creative dude he obviously has some vive uh joie de vivre he has a, obviously some energy in him still the worst thing you could be doing is kind of staring at your own reflection at home you need to be having some level of creative output but i just don't know who these people are that are demanding a book list from brian callen personally but hey i'll explain everything but let me explain how most books work you don't have to read the whole book a book usually could be 25 pages long of course he doesn't have to in it he's like a lebron james reader in it where you're always kind of reading a new book but only the first 10 to 15 pages it could even be shorter because all books are basically they make an argument there's okay. an argument there's a central theme okay in some ways if it's a fiction it's the author's argument for how you should behave in the world okay if it's nonfiction, it's usually an author's argument, which is essentially that we've been doing something wrong and we should be doing this instead. Okay. Sometimes it's just we've been doing something wrong and here are the fucking 400 pages of examples okay. of that and? and a variation on that theme. That's why you don't have to read the whole book. To is this information that we didn't know? That some books contain information, some books don't, some books are summaries, and some books are just explanations of issues. Like, what is this? Be well read. I tend to read the whole book because I love all the examples. But Nassim Taleb, who's an amazing thinker and an important voice on today's landscape, he wrote a book called Skin in the Game, Black Swan, um, Fragility. He's a mathematician, a statistician. I'm not going to ask people to read that book. I'm going to read it for you and I'm going to break it the fuck down. And I'm going to explain to you why it's important. Imagine getting secondhand information on complex issues from some of the leading intellectuals in our world, right? Um, mathematicians, physicians, scientists, inventors, cultural icons, getting it secondhand from Brian Cullen. Somehow him distilling that information from these great minds and giving it to you, what, in, in a non-comedic form as well? Because it makes sense if he can provide, if he somehow does it the same way as he stand up, which is which I really rate. He's able to take these complex issues and sort of like pull apart, pull it apart, and provide some sort of comedic value to it. Right? Great. Right? I think he's um new pod, he's new special complicated apes did a good job of doing that. Right? Um, societal issues through the through the lens of comedy. Great, amazing. But to take these complex issues that are you know um very well laid out in these books by some of our leading thinkers and you know. And then to kind of get that information through Brian Callen doesn't seem to be a good use of anyone's time. If you're not able to read, get an audio book and, you know, speed it up a bit. But don't get your information from Brian Callen, especially when he hasn't read the whole book himself as well. That doesn't make any sense. I'm going to explain to you what there are ideas. There are ideas in books and nobody has time to read a whole fucking book. So yeah, I'm going to I'm going to take the nugget. Completely wrong. If you have time to finish entire seasons of Breaking Bad, watch 90 day fiance back to back you have time to read you just don't want to do it you have to, anything that you want to do you'll make the time to do so if it's 20 minutes half an hour 10 minutes you'll do it so to suggest that no one's got time to read but they should have the time to sit down and listen to your re review of a book is just wild and again i simply for the guy because i'm sure you know not have, being able to do stand up not being able to go on your own show you need to have some level of creative output but surely this isn't a way forward and again Let's, let's kind of concentrate on the issue. This guy has multiple allegations over his head that he's having, having to deal with, right? I'd be more worried about making sure I prove my innocence, which is not, is that, is that do, you, uh, do you have to prove your innocence or do the accused have to prove your guilt? Well, it goes to the point, right? We're living in this current era we have at the moment, especially when you see what Justin Bieber did regarding his allegations. You just have to prove your innocence so you can move on. If you, <coughs> if you can't prove your innocence, you can't move on with your life. And if I'm Brian Callen, the thing that I'm world class at is doing stand up and doing a podcast with my best friend. I'm not world class at being an intellectual. I'm not world class at book reviews, right? <clears throat> I'm not world class at being a a sort of like what a quasi talking head sort of figure. That's not what I do best. What I do best is do stand up, right? You know, he's passed at the comedy store. His name's on the wall. Some of the most reputable clubs across um, America in terms of stand up. He's pretty good as a comedic actor. That's what he should be focusing on. He should be making sure that he kind of dispels those allegations, puts those allegations to bed so he can resume his actual career, not this stuff, because this isn't a good use of his time. I don't think so.
nugget of the idea and I'm going to put it in your head. I'm going to read it for you. I'm going to find what you should know about that book and I'm going to stick it in your fucking head. And by the way, you're going to laugh the whole time because there's nothing more boring than telling you doing a book report. You better be laughing. So there is some comedic value to it. But again, is that really useful? Does that really do anything for anybody? Is that really what the fans have um, contributed five dollars plus to? And again, I mentioned it previously. I don't have a problem with the the whole um what's the thing the bait and switch. That's what it's called. The whole bait and switch with the Patreon. I think um Bait Frequency mentioned his show that he thinks it was a bit scummy that they essentially set the Patreon up in terms of um supporting the show and starting up the fire in the rings and then they switched it and then had him doing with Sam Tripoli. I don't think that's an issue. I think in general the donations and the subscriptions from the fans were essentially a show of support um for somebody that they love right tfak tfak army um decided that hey we want to back this guy we want to support him and i honestly do think as well just let's keep this in mind i have a, i'm very confident that they probably wouldn't have raised as much money if it was brendan going through the same thing i think a lot of fans really love brian callan and, and they love the fact that he kind of is a good compliment to brendan if brendan's kind of you know kind of a uh, dipped in popularity with people over the last few months especially with his um you know misinformation with COVID and just general attitude on the podcast since he's now been able to do stand up but i think that was really a show of support the, sub the subscriptions and the support on patreon it wasn't really hey we want you to do the show this way but now that they've changed it i don't really see how you'd be happy if you're a fan of the show to have him decide that he wants to do book report shows and give that to you in some way shape or form that isn't what you go to brian Callen for right even his cameos are better than this in my opinion laughing and learning and that's my goal so that's what that's that's going to be a big segment on this fucking patreon it's good right mm. and then what we're going to do oh, is i'm going to have people on, rate the book i'm going to have people read maybe i'll just have you read the chapters i think are important or maybe the first chapter and we're going to see we're going to do like a rotten so he hasn't even fleshed it out yet he's just kind of you know throwing throwing things up throwing things up against the wall and seeing what sticks read the first page read, read a couple of pages leave a rating and now he's got his you know he's got some uh wind in his uh sails with uh chin's consign look at look how happy it looks tomatoes of books and we're gonna see what the fuck people who are real out there people who listen to this who work for a living i don't want fuck I'm, book reviewers can fuck themselves book reviewers have nothing in common with any of us who work for a, wow. a living comparative lit majors are not who we should be talking to so we should be talking to stand-up comedians who have anyway i want to know what you think as a human being who lives in the real world i want to know what you think is useful about the book does the book suck or does it not and even if you're not a reader i promise you you're more right than the intellectual oh no you are this is this is at the root of their kind of covid denial in it really right when essentially their whole careers were decimated due to covid and they got angry at newsom and they wanted the economy to reopen up again so they can go and do the most important work which was navy seal stand-up comedy this is at the root of it right this kind of um rejection of what not authority or gatekeepers but whatever it is right they've got some sort of rejection of the status quo and they think you know what if i do enough google searches if i watch enough videos on youtube i too can be a professional book review i too can extract more out of things but it's not that's not what it's about it really isn't like especially in this era of mass information it's more so you don't need to just sit there and listen to a book reviewer telling you what to think about a certain book you just go and buy it yourself on amazon prime to get it delivered the same day or sometimes the next day and read it and make your own conclusions but to suggest that people shouldn't you know seek the counsel of people more and more non more knowledgeable in the field that they're trying to pursue to learn in any way shape or form is nonsense to say that you know again the covid issue especially in the beginning right to say that there was an overreaction to it is maybe accurate but to suggest that somehow your area of industry is the most important thing to reopen right reopen the bloody stand-up comedy club so that they can go do their shows and make their money and support their lifestyles is just nonsense but again what do i know tools i'm telling you and we're going to start our own fucking book review book rating system so that authors who have something to say who actually can speak to people with really good ideas to solve problems those are the people we're going to showcase i'm going to create my own rating agency that's going to go well isn't it? that's going to we're really looking forward to that and if, if you've seen if you've ever seen what he did prior with mixed mental arts which i didn't mind as a show i still think hunter marts is one of the better 
um, podcasters out there who probably hasn't got a good enough platform to you know service him well I think he kind of you know did a bit of a bad job on Joe Rogan I think he came in a little bit too hot <laughs> on that show but um, if you've seen what how they sort of did that show and you know the really clunky website and the fact that they had seven feeds uh, whether or not he's gonna be able to do this isn't again this is why he's it's beneficial that he kind of does everything in his power to make sure that he kind of clears his name so he can get back on the podcast with brian brendan sorry because he is the person that's able to action and really execute some of these ideas because for all the world in the world brian is never a good businessman that's the reason why he found success so late in life especially via brendan because he didn't really have the necessary not now, but you know, whatever it may be to navigate this new media world. And, you know, with the assistance of Brian, Brendan and what he did, and obviously Joe Rogan providing him a platform, he was able to kind of have a bit of a second, third, fourth wind in his career. But to suggest that on his own, now isolated from his entire peer group publicly and maybe privately, he can somehow build a rating system and a book club that's going to be of any value to anybody outside of himself is is a bit is a bit far fetched. Yeah. The bo- Brian Callen's Bookless Book Club coming soon. That doesn't the- make any sense. Bookless Book Club. What is that? Is that like a twist on a flip of anti social social club? Like- the first book I'm going to review is going to be Skin in the Game. <sighs> Imagine that's the first book you pick a Nicholas Nassim Taleb book. A book that I've still, what, I've read like twice and still haven't got the gist of it. He's going to somehow be able to distill it after reading only a couple of pages and then summarize it in a comedic way for his fans. Nassim Taleb's book about the fact that you should be listening to people who have skin in the game. I wonder what Nassim Taleb will actually say about it. Too. People who pay a price for the risks they take. They don't pass the risk on to other people or pay no price when they make a major fucking blunder. Like sending a bunch of men and women who are brave to a country like Afghanistan or Iraq and keeping them there to the tune of trillions of dollars while people die and being like, eh, I'm on to my next job. Wasn't my fault. Go fuck yourself. Anyway, thanks a lot for listening. I'm excited. And I'll be on the road, kids. I got Indianapolis. I got Oklahoma. That's interesting. I got um, Kansas City. I got, uh, where else am I going? I'm going to Addison at the end of the month. That's a good thing. So at least the comedy clubs are sticking by him, but let's see what happens anyway. I don't think this is definitely going to materialize in the way that he thinks it's going to materialize. I'm interested to see what somebody like an Amy Kaufman decides to do. She's got a complete, she's got a real hard on for these LA comedians. She seems to be hell bent on making sure she takes them down. So I wonder if she's going to have a freelance reporters sat in the audience, uh, taking notes on what he says regarding the allegations against him. And you're probably going to get them reported out of context in sound bites on an article in Los Angeles time very, very soon. And it's just going to restart start the allegations again so that's what i mean I've, i just don't think he's dealing with this in the right way right number one he's not addressing or not trying to maybe he's privately i don't know maybe he is but it just doesn't seem like the right way to go about things now going back on the road it's just going to you know resurface all the allegations are going to come back up again people are going to be saying that he should be cancelled he shouldn't be on stage and all this sort of stuff it just isn't worth it again it isn't worth it it's more trouble than what it's worth what he's actually he should be spending his time on his career his name so he can get back on stage get back on the show with brendan and go about resuming his hollywood career at the moment what he's doing now trying to become some quasi version of stephen colbert or you know um Stephen Crowder, um, and then to do stand-up shows, you know, in secret or not in secret without his peer group as well. It doesn't doesn't seem like the right way to go about things, especially with such serious allegations around him. But again, what do I know? Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think? Do you think Brent, Brian, sorry, is going about this the right way? Will you be joining the uh, Bookless Book Club? Um, will you be following him on tour? And um, do you think this is the right way to go about things in general? Let me know in the comments down below what else do we have here let's continue du, 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 du. we're not going to talk about that so let's move on what else we want to talk about here i've got a list of things to go through Ooh, this is a good one so um 
unless you're a London person, I guess you probably don't give a crap. But Ace Hotel in the UK or in London Pacific in Shoreditch has officially closed the store permanently due to um, COVID and essentially having no business for the best part of what a year, no, no six months, sorry, no, yeah, six months, and um, it's a bit of a big deal. It shouldn't really be a big deal because it's a very swanky hotel, a very bougie hotel, a hotel that you know, I guess most of the rooms what price at 300 pounds plus the nightclub below um serves you know gives you a whiskey and coke for 20 pounds or something along those kind of lines and the green tea is you know a gazillion bucks so it really shouldn't be the care of anybody outside of anybody outside of the, those people who are you know affluent or maybe within those creative industries but in general of kind of in terms of the landscape of clubs and entertainment places and spots to go and visit in london it definitely is a big deal especially when you consider the amount of um, events that i attended there in during its inception but um again it's a further indication of just how much covid has ravaged the economy at that place like ace hotel which is in a prime location right in the middle of liverpool street in the middle of Shoreditch, sorry um you know five minute walk from liverpool street station um has you know a uh, well-regarded uh, name around the world and just well placed in terms of connections and just generally well put together place everyone that i know that stayed there has said it's a pretty nice hotel in its own regard so for that place to um have to buckle under the pressure of covid definitely tells you that you know the economy's probably been damaged and irreparably 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 um, <laughs> and we've probably not really fully um understood the effects of what's actually going on but this is definitely 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 big news for everybody that lives in london so it says yeah american hotel company ace hotel has permanently closed its outpost in shoreditch london after shuttering the venue temporarily due to coronavirus pandemic the ace hotel group confirmed on instagram post last night the ace hotel london shoreditch and shoreditch high street which was shuttered temporarily in march will not reopen under the ace name we're heartbroken to announce that our long-time home in shoreditch high street will no longer continue as ace hotel shoreditch he said hinting that it's planned to open another location in the city in the future he says we fair enough with the energy and we're excited to build a new home in london in hopeful renewed future so obviously with um this means that most probably another company will probably end up taking it over right i'm sure that's probably how the hotel game works you probably license out or lease the the unit or the building or the site out to somebody else they rebrand it refurnish it all that good stuff and it just relaunches a whole other thing but now especially with the lack of movement and lack of travel with essentially the hospitality industry doesn't really exist now um you know people can't really gather in gather indoors in large groups which essentially decimates the entirety of Ace hotel and the interesting part of Ace hotel in Shoreditch was that it wasn't just a hotel it was also a bit of a meeting hub here in London a lot of people like myself would go there and do a bit of freelancing work go there do a bit of hot desking team meetings sometimes you do interviews um I rag about the green tea but the green tea was really nice like you get like a whole tub or was it a whole like um little fucking thing fill up with it for like what 10 or something along those kind of lines um the wi-fi was really good again great connections in terms of uh, traveling to other parts of london um and it had the benefit of having a pretty decent nightclub down below which i think in the basement which might have been called concrete or something it was quite possibly the weirdest nightclub to get into because it was literally in the basement you had to walk a bit to get to it from the actual door in front um it was oddly enough um uh one of the probably if not the most expensive bars i've ever used or in my entire life living in london um like i mentioned prior the whiskey and coke i ordered must have been at least 20 dollars or 20 pounds i remember giving the lady 20 pounds and then not getting any change back and kind of you know doing a bit of a gulp silently as i continued sidestepping to the sound of i don't know wu-tang clang whoever was playing that hip-hop night when i was down there so a lot of um big hip-hop kind of urban nights used to take place downstairs at concrete so those are gonna have to find a new home um they did have a bit of a residency upstairs in the lounge area where djs can come play background music sort of lounge hotel music and that kind of vibe they recently opened up a little plant shop next doorish sort of, sort of vibe they had a fairly decent restaurant that people used to go to so it's a really big deal that they decided to shut the entire thing but again i think without the movement of tourists um of you know uh, especially without the office workers too that um kind of uh are located around the area especially around the silicon roundabout area it just doesn't make any sense to have it open um so yeah big big blow for the landscape of london going forward um it says the following 
the, the hotel company law which operates the building said it's planned to renovate the hotel and reopen it under its own management it said given the unprecedented impact of COVID-19 this hotel and its outlets will remain closed so that we can invest in significant renovations that will both refresh and enhance the guest experience we are also taking direct management of the hotel consistent with the other premium hotels in our collection we are grateful to ace for helping us make the hotel what it is today and look forward to welcoming guests back once the work is complete so i wonder how much work would have to be done because if you've ever been to ace hotel you'd know it has a very very particular set very particular branding even in terms of the furnishing and the finishes so they're gonna have to do a lot of work to make that look different right um it's gonna take a lot to really make that um you know a different experience altogether maybe even just the open the, the bloody entrance of how you walk up to it is gonna have to completely change and um, it's gonna be a completely different thing it's just funny over the years seeing it go from just being a place where you'd go in hot desk and get great wi-fi and hang out with friends right to then a place where people actually go and went and party to a place where they had two security guards and on either side of the doors it's just yeah it's just it, it was mad i said um oh and then of course um you know randomly that was a random fact too right tragically the ace hotel co-founder alex caldwell died in one of the rooms shortly after the opening in 2015 i remember this because this was when i used to work around the area no hearing that news that he overdosed in one of the rooms at the top it was like mad in it and it stayed open too that's the weird thing about hotels people die in hotel rooms all the time and it doesn't actually change anything about it like you know usually if someone gets murdered in their home they homeowners find it literally impossible to sell the house but in hotels if anything it adds to the allure of it like i imagine um that hotel in las vegas is it the mandalayne bay the one where the dude um shot loads of people um from his window that were at a country music festival i wonder if that hotel is closed or if that floor is closed or if that room is still available i'm pretty sure it is i don't know why that is why it seems to work for hotels but it doesn't work for homeowners like if someone gets murdered if if, if the home had to be happened to be the home of a serial killer where you buried people under the ground like i don't know that ian huntley home right i'm sure no one lives there anymore right or no one wants to buy that place but that's interesting that's tragic at the time as well because alice codwood was kind of looked upon as a bit of a visionary and um, and then i think i remember hearing a story where one of the partners of ace was trying to buy out alex's share in ace hotel uh for like some measly amount like thirty thousand dollars or something like that from his dad and his dad took him to court like some really messy stuff happened um you know on the other side of um alex coldwood's unfortunate passing it's as if guitars and turntables and rooms says the first ace hotel opened up in seattle in 1999 designed to appeal to creative people the hotels rapidly became signifiers of fashionable urban districts with their bustling multifunctional lobbies quirky facilities such as flower stores and barber shops and rooms featuring guitars and turntables the chain now has eight hotels in the u.s since opening a branch in Toronto later this year. The most recent Ace Hotel opened earlier this year in Kyoto, Japan, with interiors by Kengo Kuma. I wonder what that looks like. That's going to look mad, isn't it? They've got backlash, mad backlash. I don't know about that. Let's see, we'll see what the one in Kyoto looks like. I bet it looks gorgeous. Ace Hotel revealed uh, the first photos of its new venue in Kyoto, designed by Japanese architects Kengo Kuma and Los Angeles design studio Commune. I like when they do those. Oh, Commune is that brand that a lot of people use in streetwear as well, I'm assuming. But look at that. Just even just the tech, just the just the his and hers uh bath stations or wash stations already look impressive, isn't it? Bloody hell, you gotta love it. Great interior there. Amazing. Let's go back and see what they said about Black Lives Matter. I didn't know that was a controversy here regarding it. They so told Black Lives Matter face backlash earlier this year over a Instagram post by whoops, where's it gone? Uh, where is it? Uh, Black Lives Matter. Da, da, da. Over an Instagram post by Esoto New York Orleans. So New Orleans, which aims to show solidarity with Black Lives Matter movement. This was met with backlash from former employees who criticized the company's treatment of employees who are people of color, LGBTQ from minorities. This is interesting, isn't it? That they'd actually that'd be a thing in response. I was president and partner Brad Wilson issued a statement issuing a measure to groups taking a, address the criticism. He said our paramount goal at Ace Hotel is to honor the vision of our founder who was mem who um uh, founders who as members of the LGBT plus community were devoted devoted sorry, to creating a welcome and, and inclusive experience particularly those who are marginalized the feedback we received in the past week made it clear in some instances that we have strayed from this vision and then another one london's h clubs 2 is closing i guess bloody hell man it's all changing it for all the bougie places and i wonder what happens post covid because these are these are definitely luxuries right ace hotel london h club you know children firehouses you know they don't need to exist you know if they if they disappear tomorrow no one's gonna bat an eyelid 
um, I, you know, I'd rush rather keep um, Shoreditch House than, you know, have an Ace Hotel or London H Club. I don't give a shit. But I wonder what happens in the post-COVID world, whether or not these places actually make sense. Members clubs, especially when everyone's hurting, because, you know, unless your trust fund is unlimited, you're definitely going to feel a little bit of the sting in terms of COVID. You're not going to be able to, you know, gallivant around in random places as much as you were in the past. Or maybe you will. Who knows? Maybe because you've been staying at home so long, um, you know playing dress up in a mirror you probably might have more opportunity to do so in the future because you've got all that money saved next on the list we have an update on the pioneer dj cdj's 3000s they announced it what a couple of weeks ago I'm, I'm saying and now we've got full details on it and it looks beautiful um again no interest to me because this unit is way out of my price range in terms of dj equipment and also i do have the benefit of playing out at bars recent well in most well in my prior life i had the benefit of playing out in bars um a lot on the weekend so i had the benefit of playing on these things every weekend so you get a bit of practice on them and also with the opening of places like Stu pirate studios that we have here in london and all over the uk you also have the opportunity to kind of practice on industry standard equipment when Whenever you have the uh, you know the time to do so so you don't really need to have this stuff at home you can probably get away with having a controller um to do your odd bit of practice but you can probably you know if you wanted to do it i'm sure you probably could if you wanted to mm, would you would you go out your way to get an entire cdj system at home probably yeah if you're really about this life and you wanted it anyway why not it's no different than getting a you know a, a, a computer game system all rigged up right and streaming you know set up and stuff whatever it is if you're really into gaming same with djing so i guess it is what it is but um I didn't think there needs to be that many improvements with the entire with the CDJ, especially the CDJ two thousand Nexuses that I've been using quite lately. I think they were pretty, fairly robust. If anything, there were some little features that they've basically improved on the three thousands that I think were going to be good additions, such as the ability to um, rub through the tunes with your finger on a touchscreen. The touchscreen itself has been opened up and stretched out a little bit, and I'm sure what else does something else about the touch play as well but let's actually read the article regarding it on mix mac it says here pioneer dj steps um up a level with the cj3000 it's a pioneer dj revealed details of the latest model and cj cj3000 is equipped with an mpu with dj brands saying the, M the new mpu unit is the first we've ever put in the cdj the mpu processing power has enabled us to bring exciting new functions that weren't possible before and gives us scope to introduce more features with future updates the mpu ensures stable performance and allows for a smoother experience and such as a faster track loading and hot cues priced at 2399 euros another feature of the cdj 3000 includes a gigabit infinite connection for pro dj link uh, meaning all your files can be shared and played via usbs and sd cards onto six cdjs um, when combined with a dj mv10 that's nuts in it can you imagine you can play over six decks with one usb stick that is pretty impressive but again the price range man it's a it's the industry standard for a reason obviously you know it's a fairly robust um unit it's from a really reputable brand um they go out of their way to service a very particular clientele right they're only appealing to djs with the cdjs it's not like for you know um hobbyists and stuff it's meant to be played it's meant to be used on big festival stages massive clubs so they try to do whatever they, and the good thing as well about them as well to be honest is that they they are providing customers as long as you got the money to buy it you have got the option to purchase industry level equipment and use at home right it's not like other industries sometimes I don't know, let's say the hairdressing industry right there are certain clippers certain curlers certain bits of equipment certain products that you can't buy if you're not in the industry some things are only for kind of beat they're only sold like on a b2b basis and not actually sold b2c so to allow a customer to go online and just purchase it and get it sent to their home directly is pretty awesome but as well during this time and considering no one's going out to somehow justify selling a unit that's you know nearly three thousand euros for one deck is pretty nice but again, I guess, you know, when it, when is a good time to launch a product such as this? Are you going to wait for the entire economy to open up? Or are you just going to do what you're going to do? And if people want to buy it, they want to buy it. But God damn it, it's a lot of money. 
continue it said the touchscreen on the cj3000 is an improvement on the cdj2000 nexus um two measuring at nine inches and coming at a higher resolution so i'm assuming they kind of stretched it out on either side there the screen brightness has also been increased by 150 percent which is great um the bigger screen means that there have been added such information as shortcuts and buttons for things like scratch so a search and playlist is also a swipe per function on the screen ensuring tracklets can be scanned quicker the screen also allows for other additions such as the touch preview which is one of the biggest biggest features that i'm going to that i'm going to like on this when i end up using one meaning you can listen to any track touching it on its waveform which is great because usually whenever you're using a um, cdj and you want to listen to a tune you have to load it up onto the deck and then press q to kind of you know listen to it through or you know skip or fast forward it or skip through it um using the fast forward function so they have the ability to basically hold on the waveform and sort of like scan through and listen to a track and make sure that's the one that kind of sounds right um in terms of being the next track in your mix is a really really handy addition it's gonna be a touch q2 which is awesome um listen to another part of the track as part of playing by touching the waveform the mechanism on the jog wheel on a jog wheel which i'm not really a fan of i don't like the display jog wheel thing i think it's a bit naff personally in my opinion it's got the album cover on there and you know whatever i'm not really for that um the mechanism on the jog wheel on the cdj has been redesigned pioneer says it feels slicker than any unit ever made uh continues that other features include eight hotkey buttons a beat jump button that seeks uh, quantized numbers of beats can be set to value of whatever it says there and an eight loop button allowing the creation of things like a polyrhythmic loops the iphone compatible um cdj can be hooked up to one of your iphones via usb and export mode means you can play record box analyze music that's pretty cool isn't it via your iphone that's sick as a cdj 3000 is but do people have record books on their iPhone? So now they run up their, their, their libraries and stuff. That's a bit mad, isn't it? Especially considering the amount of um, data it uses or storage it uses. That's, that's a bit of a... Uh, recipe for disaster but hey as the cj3000 is a hardware unlocked device you just need to update the latest version of record box in order to use the premium performance the pro dj link uh lightning feature also means that you can sync lightning to the music you're playing cj the, the cj pro is coming soon which supports cj3000 head over here for more information so i like it man again it's a thinner model they've completely oh they never update too they've completely got rid of the cdj element of it so it's not actually a cdj anymore you don't, you don't need to put cds in them so they might have to actually change the name going forward but that's a really 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 big um step that they decided to take i think they did it in the cdj 2000 i think there's a unit you could buy that hasn't got a cd um slit in it which is a big move because the first time i used these you know was back in the day when you had to kind of burn your own cds and use a sharpie to write down a track name and all that stuff and then you have to let it dry out and not let it smudge on the sleeve um, then kind of inserted and your cds get jangled but it was actually a good time man sitting at home burning cds i've still got an old macbook pro that i used to rip all my music on but what a big advancement so that would look pretty impressive on the stage right really minimalist to see that kind of unit um in its thin glory i would definitely like to see them produce or uh you know uh, release that clear model that virgil did with pioneer for the other one you remember that one i think i might have shown it to you previously i would love to see that updated for the three thousands i think that would look sick hopefully they release them one way or the other uh, pioneer uh cd cdj it was clear it was really really cool if they did this with the three thousands that'd be amazing a whole unit made like that i'm not sure if they ever really released these to actually buy I, I don't remember seeing them being for sale but this looks amazing man like look at that completely clear that looks so cool so imagine that in the in the three thousands with its thin sort of profile and i'm assuming because um i don't know if the if the i don't know if the height of the actual unit is the same as it was prior because it sort of sits flush in one line whether or not they've just made the the little the little feet at the bottom higher to make up for the room that they've kind of taken off in the cdj or whether or not the actual thing has been lowered somewhat but i'd love to see this kind of done for the for the, for the three files i think it'll look really really cool that'll look amazing it's a bit freaky to use because you know there's no labeling on them on the buttons and stuff it's completely clear so you have to kind of be i'm assuming most people that use cdjs will be familiar with what the, each button does so you don't need to have the labels but maybe a, a few maybe they're not if not the, if not the labels on the actual machine maybe the labels on the actual buttons will help to you to remember what each button is the cue and the exit buttons and the loops and all that stuff but that would be amazing for the free bands to see them do something like this again 
like again imagine how much that is that entire unit here with four decks like god damn it madness but yeah cdj 3000s what coming out very soon i think according to pioneer so yeah let's see when they get put out there next on the list was to be have there the shoulder da, da, da. i think that might be it you know as we're about an hour in already right so yeah hour and eight minutes already so i think that might be it for now i'm gonna leave you and for this moment as per usual if it's your first time watching the show via the old youtube make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe leave me a comment down below if you're listening via the podcast app of course leave me a five star review and share this with your friends and i'll see you guys again for an episode of the show sometime very soon until then take care be safe peace